Hey guys and welcome to part two. So in the last video we set up the UG2150 and we plugged in all the cables and so forth. In this video we're going to install the drivers, we're going to calibrate it and we're going to use it. Okay, let's jump in. Here we go. Okay guys, well before we dive into using the pen display, let's get the technical details out of the way, right? So it's a 21.5 inch IPS screen. Uh, basically that means that your diameter from uh, bottom left to top right uh, is 21.5 inch, okay? Now the view angle is pretty cool. Uh, obviously using the uh, stand that's uh, included, you can uh, switch the angle, you know, up, down, so forth. But even from looking at it at the side, you can almost be standing next to it and still see uh, the image on the screen, which is pretty cool. Now, like I said, the stand multi-angle adjustable, just a one finger button release, and that's pretty easy, so that's uh, cool. Resolution, pretty important. Uh, I like this to be uh, you know, as big as possible, uh, but still fit on my desk, so 1920 by 1080 is perfect for me. The accuracy of uh, the uh, setup is 0 0.25 millimeters. Now, I don't know what that is exactly in inches, but that is, uh, let's see, one, I don't know, I'll put it in the display anyway, uh, pretty small. It's compatible with Windows uh, 10, 8, 7, Vista, XP. It's a 32 and 64 bit compatible and on a Mac uh, OS X 10.4 and above, right? Now the response rate, 14 milliseconds. For me, that's pretty important because when a pen is lagging on a uh, display, that is very, very annoying, right? Now there are two buttons on the pen uh, and they can be, uh, they're programmable if you will. And the pen pressure is at 2048 levels, which is nice. Now I uh, specifically put a comment here, average price around 570 bucks and I put a link below. I tend to compare this to uh, the Wacom uh, Cintiq 22 HD um, because of the size, but they're not really the same. I mean, that is a pen display as well. You can rotate that thing, it has buttons on the side and so forth. But that said, um, you know, for me, it's not worth the extra money. Uh, I use this for ZBrush and, uh, you know, on occasion for Photoshop, and it does what I like to do, okay? So for me, saving, I don't know, thousand bucks on this is uh, very much worth it, all right? Well, that said, let's dive in and have some fun with this thing, okay? Here we go. Okay guys, well, one thing to mention before we jump in, I noticed that while setting things up, um, the UG2150 and probably any pen display, I think, uh, needs to be set up as a duplicate screen instead of an extended screen if you have multiple, okay? Now, if this is your only display, you're not gonna have that problem, but if you've got multiple displays like I have, uh, you need to set it up as a duplicate because for example, if you're working in, let's say, Photoshop and you open up a menu, then the menu is going to open up on a different screen and you can't get it because that is not touchscreen activated and so forth, okay? So uh, duplicate, not extend, all right? Now, uh, that said, um, the UG2150 comes with a CD that contains the driver. I already did that. That is really, really simple. You uh, pop it in, you run it, and it will tell you Windows or a Mac. Uh, I have a Windows machine, so I clicked on that. A couple of seconds later, the driver's installed, you reboot your system, and that's where we are right now, okay? All right, so what did that do? Well, one of the things is it installed a um, calibration utility, okay? So there's a little uh, icon on the desktop down here, it looks like a tablet with a pen. So let's open that up. Yeah, allow that, fine, there we go. Now, uh, unfortunately, this is in the Dutch language, uh, unfortunately for you, because I can actually read that, but I'll talk you through it, okay? So what we've got here is a couple of things. We have um, the question whether we want to have the um, icon on our system tray, that's fine. Supports digital ink, not quite sure what that means. I'll dive into that later. Let's see, monitor setup. Now, if you, for whatever reason, have your display um, moved over to the left, right, top, or bottom, you can uh, adjust it here by going up you know, in X direction, Y direction, and so forth but it looks all okay. Then on the buttons for your pen, you can configure this. Right now, my uh, center button one is set to a pen or eraser toggle. So press it once, it's pen. Press it again, it's the eraser. Uh, typically used in, for example, Photoshop. 
but you can also go in and set it to uh, click with left mouse button, double click middle mouse button, and so forth, right? I'm just gonna leave it at that. And then here, your double click speed. Do you want it to be slow or fast, right? What else? Pressure. Now, the pressure sensitivity is pretty important. Uh, right now, I have it set to light, and you can actually go in and test it. You can just uh, take your pen and move it right there. And if you want that to be, uh, let's say, heavy, let's go way up here. I have to push much, much harder. Okay, so I'm going to set it to light. I just like it that way. I think it's kind of a uh, personal thing, but, you know, just set it the way you like it. Okay, and then this tab, very important, calibration. Now, there's an option for four-point calibration and nine-point calibration. Not sure why, because I would always go for nine, because it's more accurate. So we're gonna do that. And then down here, it says uh, turn or not turn, okay? If you want your display to be in a different angle, I'm gonna leave it alone, right? So let's do a nine-point calibration, here we go. So that's gonna give us uh, a number of points, obviously nine, and you're just gonna uh, tap your pen on that red little circle in the middle right there. So the system knows what location is where and where your pen is at when it touches the screen. Okay, I'm trying to do this fairly quickly, but still make sure I do it accurately. There you go. And then we're gonna go in and click OK. And we're going to click OK once more. Now, basically what that means is that we now have the drivers installed, we have the system calibrated, we have the pen programmed. So it's ready to go and ready to use, OK? So uh, let's do that. Here we go. OK, guys, well, everything has been set up physically and, uh, you know, we installed the drivers and did the calibration. So now let's have a look in Photoshop. And uh, after that, we're going to look in ZBrush to see how things work, all right? Now, first of all, it's important in Photoshop when you're working with a pen display that Photoshop knows you're working with a pen display, okay? So what we need to do is we need to set a pen sensitivity. So we're gonna go up to Windows, and we're gonna go to, oops, Windows and Brush Settings, and make sure you got Shape Dynamics clicked on. And then go here and make sure you got Pen Pressure turned on, because if I turn this off and I draw a line, and a line and a line and a line. It doesn't matter how hard I push on the screen, they're all the same. When I turn this on and this is set up, I can do very faint lines, thicker lines, and so forth, okay? Pretty important. Right, so once that is set up, what else? Well, you can go in and click on the bottom button, that at least the way I configured it, bottom button is the eraser mode. So when I click on it, you'll see eraser mode pop up on the screen, and I can go in, and right now I'm also erasing the white background, that's why it's looking funky. What we can do is create a new layer, and I'll just go in here and delete the original one, and then we'll go into pen mode, draw a line, click on it again, eraser mode, and erase that line, okay? Now, uh, changing colors, pretty easy. In pen mode, hang on, yeah, there we go, and so forth. So very, very intuitive, very, very easy, okay? And I think once I played around with this, let's say for an hour or so, it will be second nature, okay? Now, that's Photoshop, but what about ZBrush? Let's check that out. All right, guys, well, we're in ZBrush, as you can see, and uh, let's have a go at our light box, and let's go in, and let's do a Dynamish. Double click on that, and we're ready to go. Now, first of all, navigation with this uh, pen display. When I uh, touch my pen on the screen next to the sphere and I move it around, you'll see that it will move correspondingly, okay? Now, what if I hold down my Alt key? I do that, I can do this. What if I hold down my Alt key, release it, and bring it in or out? You know, zoom in and out as per usual, but same with your mouse, all right? So cool. So let's say I want to select a brush. Here we go. Let's do, uh, I don't know, our standard brush is already selected. Let's go back in here. Let's uh, increase the intensity a little bit, draw size a little bit, and let's just have a go. I'm gonna hit the Alt key, and there you go. Now, I am by no means good in ZBrush at all. That's one of the reasons why I got this thing in the first place. But as you can see, again, very intuitive, very, very quick, and I think when you uh, are going to be sculpting in ZBrush, uh, basically a pen display and a pen is a necessity, okay? 
Now, uh, how about the pen display itself and how that feels and looks and so forth? Well, the pen, uh, I hear people saying that it's squeaky. Now, I didn't hear anything just yet, so I'm not quite sure what they're talking about and uh, maybe the angle of the pen or whatnot, but I find it very responsive. It's uh, super quick. I, I haven't heard it squeak yet. Uh, as far as um, the pluses and minus compared to, for example, a Wacom, well, a Wacom Cintiq, for example, has a bunch of configur configurable buttons on the side, right? Now, that can come in handy, of course, because right now I have one hand on the keyboard and one hand on the pen on the screen. Now, for the price difference that we're talking about here, I don't mind that at all, okay? Because I used to work with one of those Wacom uh, tablets where you had buttons as well, and I never used them because I was so used to my shortcuts on my keyboard that I would do that instead, right? Small price to pay in my opinion. And then finally, the glare or the, the glossiness of the screen. And people are telling me that there's a lot of reflection going on. Well, it kind of depends on your workspace. I tend to uh, work in a fairly dark environment anyway because I'm looking at a lot of monitors and you know I don't want all these lights reflecting uh, to begin with. So again, for me, not really an issue. So in conclusion, based on the price of this product compared to what I am using it for, and I think that's very important to mention. My main reason is the ZBrush basically. For that, I'm not gonna spend 2000 bucks on a Wacom, right? So I'm uh, pretty happy with this thing so far. I might do an update in the future, but for now, two thumbs up, okay? Well, that said, thank you guys very much for watching the video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time, bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.